Then now let's talk about this book. And Ken is the homie. He's he a legend. Like he a legend. Book. I fuck with Ken Stevo. Uh -huh. They came to me with you know Simon Schuster. Mm -hmm. That's big, you know, man. That's white big. Company. That's big. Yeah, we had we big were, big like yeah. yeah. We was arguing like a mother. Like I, mean, I don't give a fuck what you pay nobody else. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't give a fuck what name you call. Yeah, it's Boosie. Yeah, it's Boosie. Hello world, it's your girl Taylor Frusell, Superstar PR, and I'm super excited to announce that you are now getting ready to watch the trailer of the making of the autobiography of a celebrity starring Boosie. And guess what guys, we are coming to a city in a state near you. So be sure to follow us on all platforms at The Hip Hop Fraternity and also go to thehiphopfraternity.com. Again, this is Taylor Frusell, Superstar PR and the national publicist for The Hip Hop Fraternity. See you guys soon. I'm the boss of all boss. When I quit high school, I started rapping. And, my, and as soon as I started rapping, I took off. I was getting heavy in the game. You know, I, it was one time, nigga was, I was at school, nigga was trying to bring me 17 pounds. Nigga was trying to bring me 17 pounds of weed. And I was trying to fuck with it. I've been trying to fuck with get under this nigga. So it was a big time for me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to get under this nigga. This nigga feed niggas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my brother Boosie, you know what I'm saying? Across the track, you feel me? It's the kid, kid, daddy, you feel me? This is a milestone for the hip hop community. It's a milestone for the black community. And it's definitely nice to see a change um, in pace for Boosie. The memoir by Boosie Badass, Across the Tracks. Boosie, one of the real ones in the game, man, you know. We'd have been down in Charlotte, North Carolina, opening up for him at KOD. Across the tracks can really relate to it, coming from Baton Rouge and East St. Louis, like some of the same things going on. Through this man's music, I realized through his trials and tribulations, that man deserve everything he got, man. Salute and shout out to Bluesy, man. This book right here is one of the books that I can tell you for a fact that's going to get a lot of young people into reading. You got to let them know, and a book is not just about music. No, a book, when you write a book about somebody, it's about they, like what they've been through. You know, like, and, and I've been through hell and bad things. That's what make my, that's why I was telling them on the phone. Yeah. Don't tell me about no another nigga. <laughs> this nigga ain't did what I did. This nigga ain't certified like me. Yeah, I heard I was on the phone. Music and music ain't talking about life stories and about life stories. Life story, yeah. You talking about music now. We're not talking about me. Yeah. You're talking about a life book girl. on a life story. Yeah. If you want to do a book, well, you do his book and do sing along. Yeah. I can't wait until Boosie's book come out. I didn't know he had, I'm a, I've been a fan of Boosie for the longest. And to hear he's got a book coming out, and you know how real he is. Like, he just gets straight to the point. Mr. the sign of every other street nigga. Got to give the Boosie. Then you got the book, Cross the Track. I'm talking about everything in there, man. Everything from... Thugging, selling dope, going through everything in a rap game, losing partners, all that. Hey everyone, it's your boy King Ditto. Hey, and I just gotta say that man Boosie Badass was to wipe me down himself, man. I take great inspiration from him. Uh, apart from having diabetes and him being locked up, you know, he's an author, you know what I'm saying? He got movies, and you already know, he make music. So I can't see no other reason why. I cannot relate to this man. You know who it is, it's since I know the CEO of the Hip Hop Fraternity Kentucky. Shout out to Boosie and congratulations on the new book. You know what I'm saying? Cross the tracks, man. Go definitely go cop that. When you're in a situation like that, you fighting for your life, whether it's cancer or anything, and you get a second chance, you gotta make good on that second chance. When I got cancer, my AT Keisha died, Gene died, everybody was dying from it. I I just I ain't, I ain't think I was going to make it. I feel like I was going to die. I had a few doubts when I was facing my murder charge. Yeah. And that was basically a doubt from the media. Because the media was so crazy. And it was, you know, I just felt like I was somewhat guilty going into trial. And I think that in this country, in terms of African Americans, not only are they the victim of police brutality, but they're the victim of the criminal justice system. It's called mass incarceration for a reason. And Boosie's just a part of that whole scenario. You know, he's, yeah, he went to jail. He was in jail with a bunch of people that was, looked like him, 
talk like him, act like him, rap like him, and everything. The mass incarceration and the criminal justice reform is basically an extension of slavery. Slavery never really ended in this country, and they put that in the 13th Amendment clause. They said that we're not going to have slavery in this country unless you're committed or um, convicted of a crime. Well, I got indicted on a murder charge the same day I got indicted on my bringing the drugs into the system. When they put me on death row, I used to tell them niggas shut the fuck up. Niggas like, always talking negative, you know what I'm saying? You're not breaking me, so you know that's how I place myself in prison. I always look at prison and try to bring everybody up on the tier. Everybody, you know, I try to bring everybody up, start rapping and shit. You go crazy, like I've seen niggas really go crazy. Yes, you know, I was in five years. I was around, I was on four tiers with people hungry. And I thought about him actually dying because they said death penalty. And the thought of him dying just took me aback when I found out that somebody was supposed to be testifying against him in the death penalty charge. I said, oh man, I said, it's going to be a hard one. But he come with the streets, you know what I mean? Every now and then you got to make a play or two, so we understand that. You thugging, dog. You cannot snitch. If you get shot, you cannot tell. You hold your, you hold your, when you in the streets, you don't have a courtroom unless they make you go to it. You hold your court, you hold anything you have in the street. But you know, God is good, you know, and Boosie eventually beat the death penalty charge and he eventually came home. A majority of people who get convicted of crimes in a court of law is because of information that they provided, testimony that they've given. So this, in turn, doesn't allow prosecution to have to work that hard. Plus, they got informants. You don't put the police in it. You just can't. You a thug. You thugging. Once you go to shoot that people, you thugging. You cannot turn red. It's human nature for people to, to snitch or do things um, to make their life better. Snitching ain't snitching. These are just these are just normal people. The, a snitch snitch has to be involved in the crime with you. You're dealing with civilians that'll tell on you. They don't. They, you're breaking the law. No matter how careful you think you are, somebody close to you is gonna be the one that rats you out. It happens. I've seen this book and I've seen this movie many times, and it always has the same. Thing. When Steve O called me, the guy from Infinite Records, the one who brought Cuckoo Cow out, the song that we all know in my project and told me that he was interested in doing a deal with me on the Boosie book deal. I said, that's cool because I'm already working on the literary program, the Kenai literary program. And I said, he'd be a good first candidate for my project. The deal that um, Boosie has with Simon & Schuster and other uh, artists that's in entertainment, I think it's a great opportunity to reach the youth, to teach the youth, and to share their story in hopes of encouraging other people. I think it's a good opportunity because as as we know, the entertainment industry, the hip hop industry is very lucrative. Hip hop fraternity, you already know, give some love to my boy. Here we go, my man, Boosie. Oh, oh, gee, nigga. So, Boosie, I met him many, many years ago. And when I met him, he was in Milwaukee. He didn't have a coat. So I had several mink coats. So I went in my trunk. I just so happened to have a mink coat in my trunk. And I gave it to him. When you look up and 469,000 is missing out of the account, Boosie, and it's getting hairy and it's a family issue at the same time, man. What was going through your mind, first of all, when you saw the money missing? And then what was going through the mind when you had to get into it with your brother? Man, when that money was missing, bro, I broke down. That was the money I had just came home and got a check with. The man got a prison with nothing. And I got an empire. You know, I came home and everything I did, I, I did to get more checks than rap. Hey, it's gorgeous. I'm the CEO of It's Gorgeous Music. I'm also the CEO of Hip Hop Fraternity Las Vegas. Seeing what Boosie um, is doing with itself as a brand is one of the key ingredients of what I look for in an artist is because I'm looking for artists that um, understand the business side of the music industry in comparison to still looking at the, the value in their talent. What's up? It's your boy Rico The Plug, the Hip Hop Fraternity Minnesota. 
When I was living in Atlanta, I had an opportunity to work with Boosie on a set of a project that we were shooting from this house live. And in that moment, I got an opportunity to see Boosie as the businessman that he is. And I have to say that he is a very astute businessman. And I think a lot of his young fans will find out exactly what kind of businessman he is once they read this book, Across the Tracks. You find out that Boosie has the Boosie liquor. He has Boosie potato chips. He got the book deal, of course, with me and Steve-O. He has uh, other things. He got the record label. He's putting his kids out. So, you know, I think that that's one of the things that we as young men need to learn. And when you got somebody of that statue who's writing a book, who have many fans who generally gets his album, and he got a book out called, you know, Across the Tracks, which simply means, you know, he made it over, you know, I think that that's very powerful. Some of the most successful people I know didn't even graduate from high school. And if they can make it, I don't care what you say, that means anybody can make it. If a person that doesn't have a high school diploma can turn around and, and, and be a, a multi-millionaire that came from nothing, that means your chances don't look so bad, you know. But it's about what you do today. You know, what you do today, after you see this documentary, what you do today, that could determine how your future is going to look. The first thing I would like to let you know, that whatever you think you are, that's what it is. If you think you're a thug, a gangster, a criminal, a jailbird, that's what's going to happen. If you also think that you can rise, you can fly, you can go to the moon, that's what it is. As a man think, it is hard, so it is. Yeah, you know what's messed up when I heard about this new Fed case, Boosie caught, you know what I'm saying? But you know Boosie, he get back to, to his bag, get back, you know, to his family. He always been resilient through everything, you know what I'm saying? But it's a good lesson for everybody to learn, especially the youth, you know what I'm saying? When you're chasing a bag, make sure you stay to the right side of the law, you know what I mean? Like, for real, big facts. And don't forget, go pick up that Cross the Tracks by Boosie. You know what I'm saying? You heard it from me, CEO, HHF Ohio. And Boss Lady, COO, HHF Ohio. The system that's against Boosie. And when you when, when when he gets incarcerated or when he gets to jail, the first thing y'all hear is the stuff that the system put out. When black men get in that car and they drive down the street with tinted windows, loud music, rims, they're targeted. One of my nephews called me T-Magic. Mm -hmm. And he was like, man, Boosie want to see you. Um, where you at? And I was like, I'm in Atlanta. He was like, you in Atlanta, man, come by the house. So I heard Boosie in the background say, man, tell me to come on by. And I didn't know if Boosie knew about the federal law or not. Now, you know, I, I knew about the federal law because I stayed in the law library. You know, I've helped many guys who, who had that kind of case. I wanted to make sure that Boosie understood that law. It was guys who went to the state and got illegal search and seizure. But then when they come to the feds, the feds are like, oh, well, the state illegal search you. We just charging you with possession of a firearm as a convicted felon. Hey, how you doing? This is James C.B. Gray, president and national spokesperson for the hip hop fraternity. Thank you for watching the trailer of the making of an autobiography of a celebrity featuring Little Boosie. And stay tuned for episode two with Ice-T, episode three with Veronica Brown, and episode four with Freeway Ricky Ross. I see Boosie the how they see I see Boozy how they used to see Pop. Like, I'm saying, real street nigga. Real nigga with morals. Like, he raised a lot of us in such a sense. And I don't know pussy shit, but somebody to look up to. Somebody who you knew was going to, yeah, somebody mm -hmm. who you knew was going to keep it 100. Somebody mm -hmm. who took care of their kids. Somebody who put their priorities first. Somebody who said, you know, fuck that industry lane and kept that shit 100. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it's a lot of people. Yeah. Ain't doing it that way. So for the ones who is, I salute. For the ones who is, you know what I mean? I cherish anything they have. So him having a book on the way, you know, I'm I, I shit. I'm 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 just happy to be a part of that. And when it drop, I'ma probably be the first to read it. Mm -hmm. Back at home, man. Back at home, man. This motherfucker with my nigga cash, man. Eat our coldest motherfucker. Oh, God. That's a hundred large when you hit a dope bill. Three thousand dollar fitted still got a coke spill. I want to shout out to Boozy's new book, Cross the Track. Y'all go get that for me, please. Shout out to Boozy's new book. 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 Shout out to Boozy
out to boost it as new book, cross the track, go get that new book by Boosie Fed A shout out to Little Boosie, you know what it is, bro. Hey, I got the book. Shout out to Boosie New Book. It's your girl, that damn baby cakes. I want to say shout out to my Scorpio twin. You know, Boosie, aka Boopa. I love you, baby. Go make sure y'all get that. Cross the tracks. Let's go. So the same shit my bro sell. Always did my own thing. I ain't in the riding coattails. She ain't never seen this shit before.